Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And it's time for another uh, double dose of Dismal Disney. This just dropped not too long ago. Disney is responding apparently to that 130 page white paper from Triumph Partners with a white paper of their own saying, nah. Basically. Nah. -uh. <laughs> nah, -uh, that sums it up. So yeah, this was released today. And um, oh yeah, we're gonna take a look at this. I don't know how many pages this is up top of my head, but here, you cannot restore the magic if you don't understand the magic, everyone. This looks like they just, they just threw this together. Like the, the triangle group paper actually looked like it, they put some thought there into it. There are some graphs and stuff further down, so we'll look at <sighs> okay. it here in a minute. But okay. before we get into it any further. Before we get into it any further, we did not plan to make another video today. No, but we were like, yay, we're done. Nope. nope no. Nope. <laughs> never ends. The dismal news never ends. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, you get woohoo if you do. Woohoo. Uh, go out to piratesandprincesses.net for more objective Disney news. Yada, yada, yada. Let's, let's talk about this. Okay, so yeah, they're talking about you have to you have to know the magic to restore it. And I love this. Disney is unparalleled creative engine that drives shareholder value creation until recent years when until it's gone down years, the shitter. Yeah. Over 100 years of incomparable storytelling excellence. Yeah, except your stories have sucked as of late. Yeah. And pop makes the impossible possible. If it was a source of inspiration in the cynical world, your movies are live action remakes of the, the, the creativity that existed. God. Oh my They're God. They're going to talk about their streaming platforms and all and Pelts and Trying. Pelts has no experience in managing creative businesses. Well, Iger is, 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 was basically a, a bean counter, too. Yeah, he was a bean counter at ABC. Yeah. Pelts' suggestion for board led creative review process is value destructive. Bureaucracy doesn't drive box offices or creative success. What? what? Wait a second. <laughs> yeah, you're damn right. That's... Nothing you've done has driven a driven box office. Success. Yeah, I mean, you're running your stuff through the uh, DEI gauntlet. And not you just know? that. It's like, come on. They're, they keep live actioning the shit out of everything. The bureaucracy doesn't oh drive it. God. Basically, Peltz was, was saying that they need to have a board led review of basically the films they're doing, why they're doing them, and basically the culture of the company to make sure that they're going to reach the largest audience possible. It, bureaucracy doesn't. Does it lead to creativity? Well, neither does the shit you've been doing. They are freaking out. The fact that they dropped this video and this paper today tells me that they are, they think that they might lose. I know. Pelt's I think they're going to lose. Idea to bundle ESPN and Netflix, our biggest streaming competitor. It underscores how he, un how he understands, how he doesn't understand about media and our business. Listen, I don't know if I agree with about the ESPN Netflix thing, but Disney's plan is stupid too. I don't what? see how Disney's plan is any different. Wasn't like the Warner Brothers, Peacock, ESPN. It was Warner Brothers, Fox. Okay. Like, yeah. that's dumb too. Like, they're already taking, look, they're already taking some of their shows. And punting them off to other streaming services like Roku and Tubi and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, God, they just, okay, mm. the board is already delivering on Disney's potential. That's why the stocks have been dog shit until recently. Yeah. Um, they successfully executing against detailed plans for growth. Basically, we laid a bunch of people off. We cut these costs for Roy and all this other crap. Not Roy Disney. No. Yeah, no. Their reorganized sector disruption early and oversaw a carefully planned long-term strategy. They never they never elaborate on. Five independent directors were added within the last three years that Iger picked for the most yeah. part. You know, succession planning committee is empowered to support a top board priority. Successful CEO transition that you Who? never hear about until they're cornered. There there are no obvious candidates. Like before it was with Disney, like you had Rizzullo, you had Tom Staggs, you had multiple people, Kevin Mayer even before you had multiple people that could have taken over. And now they don't have anybody at the company that could take over. This, this, okay. This, they're not mentioning anybody else, but Peltz, Perlmutter and Rizzullo. Okay. They're not mentioning Blackwells or anything else. They're talking about, they want to have two board seats, which talked about. Nelson Peltz and Isaac Perlmutter, um, who own 79% of Peltz's stake, and Jay Rizzullo will harm Disney. How? We believe Peltz, Perlmutter, and, Perlmutter, and Rizzullo will be a dis destabilizing distraction with a questionable agenda. 
Honestly, the stabilizing distraction and questionable agenda pretty much sums up Disney for the past two or three years. Two of those people were at Disney when Disney was more successful. Uh-huh. I'm just saying. And one of them was the one who set the plan for Marvel up that Disney yeah. used until they got to their, their phase four and then they, they, they shit themselves. Despite agitating for nearly two years, Pelt still has not communicated any novel ideas that are inane. Actually, has several good ideas. Uh, the people I'm not hearing any ideas from is Bob Iger and company. Yeah, it's just they're dancing around the issue. Like, what exactly are you planning to do, Bob? Like, what exactly? You're, you're going to spend money in the parks. Where exactly are you going to spend the money? How are you going to compete Head to head with Universal with what a reskin Splash Mountain yeah. and Country Bears. Oh, oh, wait, oh, wait, you're, you're going to talk about okay. the parks, okay? So I'm not going to read all this because it's going to take too long, but you can go find this. Uh, it's out there. It's a new SEC filing. I love this. Our strategic transformation, building on four key priorities, is working. Studio creativity. We're committed to tell the best stories and leaning into core franchises. So more IP shit, like more sequels and live action reimaginings. Best-in-class storytelling continues with six of the ten most streamed movies across all the U.S. streaming platforms in 2023. Um, they're including Hulu in that. And, yeah, that one, they're pushing it. And some of the things that were the most extreme, I want to point out, were from years ago, like Moana. Robust lineup of franchise titles in, in um, year 24 and beyond to drive audiences to theaters and Disney+. Plus. Uh, uh, what? Because what I'm seeing isn't anything impressive. There's not much. I mean, yeah, you look at 2025 and they've got what? Fantastic Four and they've got Snow White and they've got Elio and uh, the only yeah. one uh, like maybe Fantastic Four. Maybe. Maybe. They're talking about the stream profitability that they, you know, never seem to hit. I'm not going to read all these. The future of ESPN, which seems to be a big problem because, you know, it's we're been a problem for like 10 years. Joint Ventures, yeah. Fox and Warner Brothers Discovery, you know, oh, it's well, better so, than Netflix. who's actually yeah. kicking your ass. That's what I don't understand. Why is that a better deal working with your direct competitors? And again, uh, Warner Brothers Discovery is your direct competitor. Fox was the guy that uh, you you bought your biggest commercial failure oh, off. Oh, they over bring it. that up later. It's funny. You know, um, why would you go into business with them? Like instead of Netflix? Well, it gets better. Okay. So it gets better as we go on. Experiences and growth, strategically investing in turbo the turbocharged growth. They keep saying that, but they don't see they don't say how. They're going and all turbo. We're hearing, I know. <laughs> Disney's going and all turbo. you hear, all you hear is mostly about overseas parks, which we're going to get to it. Well, just now recent openings of world of frozen in Hong Kong and Zootopia in Shanghai, the Chinese parks are generating excitement and high guest satisfaction in China. Uh, okay. Together with Epic games, we plan to create an all new gaming and entertainment universe. So your growth experiences for theme parks is overseas parks and Epic universe, the video game park. Yeah. That's basically they, what he just said. And they just threw that together at the last minute. They're talking about uh, all the commitments that we reorganized and we significantly reduced entertainment operating losses. And they go on and on. Same stuff they've been saying. I love this. Disney's unparalleled IP and storytelling have been a core strategy advantage for over 100 years that we've flushed in the last yeah. five. So they're talking about the unmatched, you know, stuff and all they have. All we have Hulu and ESPN and yeah. ABC and who cares? And they're talking about in, enduring franchises, highlight our powerful IP, Frozen. We're getting like what? Frozen 3, Frozen 4, Frozen Attraction. Oh, yeah, that's what this is. Yeah. Here, Frozen 3, Toy Story, Toy Story 5, Avengers, another Avengers Secret Wars movie and Avengers 5. And then Star Wars. What are they going to say here? Uh, they haven't had jack shit other than these TV shows. Three untitled films. Yes, coming in, in, in 2026. Uh, yeah, I, I don't believe that. I think The Mandalorian, and if it doesn't do well, it's that's... 2024. I can't read it. 2024 to 2027. Yeah. This is very tiny writing. We're, we're working on it, guys. We're working on it. This time we'll get it right. Let's talk about the creative leaders and what they oversee, you know, all that stuff. But these guys aren't, aren't the ones on the chopping block, though. That's that's the thing. They're just focusing on their core brands and franchises to deliver higher returns. And here's their films they have coming out. And the television. Is this what they have coming out? Different things like, oh, yeah, Frozen, the Mufasa. Nobody Pen, wants, Moana nobody wants a, Muf a live Zootopia action Mufasa too. prequel. <sighs> Like the only movies here, I'm looking at this. The only movies that are going to do, okay, Deadpool and Wolverine, 
Moana too, probably if it doesn't completely suck just because it's Moana. Oh. Uh, I'm looking at the TV. Bluey's on here. A couple things. And they don't make Bluey. No. They distribute Bluey. And guess what? Bluey's on hiatus. So that's not going to do you a shit ton of good now, is it? Because they're out making a story about a 15-year-old wanting to get laid. So it's called Bluey. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to have Bluey. Oh, their film studios. I love this. 20 Academy Award nominations. The most of any company. They won five. And none of them were for Disney. They were all for Searchlight. Five or 21st Century Studios, whichever it was. They had 20 nominations, most of anybody. And I said at the time, that doesn't mean you won. They won five. And most of them were like for costumes and makeup and stuff like that. Again, six of the 10 most streamed movies across all platforms in 2023. But some of those movies were like Encanto and Moana that weren't recent films. Yeah. Number one, the global box office, seven of the last eight years. I don't think last year was one of them. No. Eight out of 10 and 13 out of 20 highest grossing films of all time globally, and some of them they acquired. All yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Our upcoming films and reimagined classics Planet of the Apes, Inside Out 2, Deadpool Wolverine, Alien, Romulus, Moana 2, Mufasa. So we have Deadpool. Well, Inside Out is the animated sequel, Moana is the animated sequel, Mufasa is a live action, basically animated sequel. Yeah. Alien's not going to do well. Uh, de- the only. Inside Out 2 might do okay, maybe. Deadpool Wolverine's like the only shot you yeah, have. Yeah, that pit. one's going to do pretty good, no, I think. But good news, next year we got Captain America that's, Brave that's New World. That's not no going to do well. Snow White, hot damn. That's dead Elio, on no one cares. Fantastic Four, maybe. 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 Zootopia 2, maybe. Avatar, probably will. And 2026 and beyond, and beyond, Toy Story. The first Toy Story movie since we fucked up the last one. And Frozen 3. Oh, okay. and New Star Wars with Baby, Gro- with Baby Yoda and Mandal- Mando. Okay, so I love this. Toy Story. They're not mentioning Lightyear. That was a spinoff. I know. That's You're what I'm saying. But deliberately not one. mentioning that one. Yeah, I know. So talk about streaming has disrupted the industry's historic economic models. It has. But you guys are, did it to yourself, too. Because part of the problem with like the box office and shit is that you guys were offering it on your streaming service to try to offset losses. And then all you did was kill people going to the movie theater. Yeah. And they're saying, and streaming, the problem is historically, the reason it's having trouble is because you guys, like all these other studios, decided, why well, make content for our studio? And we can make our own streaming service. Yeah, that that never made any sense to me. Like, I, I get they were thinking, well, we'll just own everything. But I'm like, a couple things. One, again, you know, Tubi, uh, Fox, Rupert Murdoch bought Tubi for less than half a billion dollars. And Disney spent like how how many billions to build Disney Plus from the ground up? Like, you, you could have just bought Tubi and put Disney content on it. He took your money that you overpaid for Fox and went and bought Tubi. But this. Look, I'm looking at these. This is stupid. Streaming consumption is projected to nearly double uh, since from 2019, which was you know four years ago, to 2027, which is three years ago. So it's supposed to double from four years into the next three years. Audiences want flexibility. Well, they have wanted that forever. Ad-free offerings have conditioned customers, consumers to reduce ad loads. Except even if you have ad-free, they still want ads on your shit. We watch Hulu all the time, and new shows have a shit ton of ads on it, even though we pay for ad-free. So, oh God, yeah, it's awful. Sit and spin bullshit. They're talking about the TV, e- TV ecosystem declining at a accelerated rate. Well, yeah, that's because all this, the streaming, because that's where it's just shifting to. Um, they're talking about, oh, evolving theatrical distribution model. That, again, you caused your own problem. You guys, you guys, the, well, Disney especially was one of the main reasons that there's a problem now. Because you're the ones that set that whole pay to watch at home shit. And trained your audience to wait for it to come to Disney Plus. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think Disney should just stick to being Disney, making the best content, and then just finding a place for it. I mean, it's just I think what what is going to be their undoing is they got they got too big, um, they've got too many plates they have to spin, and now they want to be a tech company too. And it's, you know what yeah, I'm saying? They have too many things. Yeah. Um, you're talking about the past, how TV ecosystem became deteriorating because. People were switching to streaming, but not so much then. It wasn't until probably like 2019 on the successful launch of Disney Plus when you jumped into it made the streaming wars begin. Um, Most most of this is just bullshit. We cut a bunch of costs last year because we got forced to. Uh, Yeah, pretty much. They didn't have a choice. They didn't have a choice. I mean, look, for all this talk of rah-rah, Disney Plus is doing so fantastic. I mean, uh, Peltz did 
did point out that for what they're spending, they're getting very little return on that. Well, yes, and here, 2024 and beyond, we're positioned to, but this is not proven. They're going to reach global scale beyond consumer reach because we said so. We're ability to create enduring franchises. And while you haven't so far, you're, you have the ability to buy a bunch of shit, but you can't maintain them. Every time you put more stuff, it gets further and further down in viewership. So bullshit, best in class streaming platforms on the cusp of achieving profitability. Not really. They just keep straying further and further from Walt. There you go. A strong balance sheet because yeah. they said so. Um... Here's how we outperformed relevant peers, but you didn't since I grew return. Wait you're, wait, you're, wait, you're comparing it to Warner Brothers Discovery and Paramount. What? None of this is being compared to, to, uh, to Netflix. Do you see that? None of this is being compared to Netflix. Uh, no, that's... God, They're comparing it to who's the, the, the ones that are kind of close to us when we're kicking their ass. Make sure you pick those, okay? Because you're not comparing it. You keep saying you're, you're the next Netflix, but you're not comparing Apple yeah, to Apple's. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there you go. They're talking about streaming platforms in just four years. Okay, I'll give them that one. They have done a lot in four years of streaming. I'll give them that one. Um, talking about major deals and differentiating Disney stream business and all this other stuff with con with they bought in Bam Tech. I'm still trying to figure out what they did exactly. They with didn't Bam do Tech. much of anything. They bought other basically other people developed it and they bought it. But they could have bought an entire streaming platform for what they spent to build well, look at this. Disney Plus. This is also they acquired. Um, Avatar they got from the, the buying Fox. Right. X-Men was Marvel. Uh, they got 20th Century Studios, Searchlight, National Geographic, and they bought they, they got the ownership of Hulu and FX. Also, they bought into. Deadpool acquired. Fantastic Four acquired. And Star Wars acquired. Family Guy acquired. Simpsons acquired. The only one here that's the, kind of their own is Modern Family because it was on ABC. Are any of those things worth 71 or $72 billion? Well, what he says it is. No, we're talking at best case scenario, Avatar. Avatar is not worth $72 billion. Alien sure as hell isn't. No. Disney is driving profitability between double digit, towards double digit levels that you had to cut and fire a shit ton of people to do so. And you only did that because you're, you, because Pelts threatened to come after you last time. Mm. That's the only reason you did yeah, it. Yeah, they wouldn't have. But here, here, like guys, just think about this. Disney wouldn't have done any course correction if they hadn't put pressure on them before. To, you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. they don't, Disney doesn't just take the initiative itself to be like, you know what? We should try fixing things. No, they don't. No, you're pay pigs. They're just going to keep doing the same things again and again and again. Okay. Look at this. This is funny. This one I find very entertaining. Favorable streaming paces versus Netflix, right? Origin or, or margin five years from launch. Five years from launch is break even. Disney and then Netflix is but over fifteen percent. Five 15%, years. Yeah. Five years from launch, right? Future target. This is what they're hoping for. Netflix twenty nine percent today, and then Disney double digits. I'm like, but that's, just this is like <laughs> double digit percent. <laughs> it's like one of those commercials where they do like a detergent, and then they animate that the that the clothes come out clean. Because there's no proof of it, but we said so. Because it's our target. That don't mean you're going to fucking hit it. Double digit margin. It should be like, they should have just put a lot. And then look here. A lot percent. Just, That's what we're hoping for, okay? Just so you know, Netflix is nearly 13 years further along than we are. Yeah, but that's that's just it. They've kind of staked a claim. I, I would have, I mean... I would have been like, yeah, let's just make the best damn content for Netflix or whoever the highest bidder is and just be the best content producer out there and worry about our theme parks and not try to compete with Netflix. This is like me saying, what's Mr. Beast subscribers at? Well, that's where I'm going to be in the future, my future target. Uh, yeah, I know. Because right? I, I'm going to do that. Oh, my God. Netflix has volume and global content. Disney, and they're going about basically comparing the Netflix and Disney. Netflix has years of... As you point out, Netflix has years and years and years on you. They are yeah. they were the gold standard for streaming. You guys are just jumping into it now. Um, you're going about your pricing, our ARPU. Okay, let's talk about ARPU for a minute. Netflix is higher ARPU. Yeah, Disney, until they made the deal in India with a Disney Hotstar, yes. their ARPU was only like $6 and something, $7 per, per person. But they would always say excluding 
a hot star because it was like 80 cents a person in hot in, in India. And if you had to average it in, because there's a lot of subscribers, a big hunk of their subscribers on Disney Plus were in India. And if you had to if you factor that in with math, then you'd find out their ARPU was dog shit. So they would do it excluding that large audience. But, I, you know, whatever. I would laugh if they put down one of these slides and had Pluto. <laughs> dog shit. Their now, ARPU is dog shit. <laughs> Disney's going to build ESPN into the preeminent, preeminent digital sports platform. Didn't it used to be the preeminent sports, you know, channel? It was for years, yeah. And now it's, yeah. they have to rebuild it. And I still don't understand what the hell they're doing with, with ESPN. I don't Does think anybody they know. understand what they're doing with ESPN? They keep talking a lot of shit, but I don't know what they're actually doing with it. I don't know. They just uh, look. Here's the thing: Disney's got too many plates. It's trying to spin, and it's dropping them. And mm -hmm. like they need to go back and focus. Honestly, the I I would have been like, let's not even get into streaming because that's going to spread us so thin. Like Netflix, that's all they do. To be fair, though, I mean, that's the doubt. That's what saved their asses when the pandemic hit, though. If we're going to be fair, I mean, I don't want to be fair. I know, but I, I try to be, be biased. Fair. Like just like and I said, angry and salty. I have brought up in other videos. <laughs> yeah. In other videos, like they were talking about the big uh, increases in cost of food. I'm like, well, to be fair, yeah, that's cr increased across the board. To be fair, they've always said they're going to be profitable by the end of 2024. That hasn't changed. To be fair, if you're going to be, you have to be. Oh, they're not going to be profitable. They're not going to be profitable at, by the end of 2024. Well, they're claiming no it. But I'm saying you have to at least look at it in a fair way. If something is do being done right, you need to say so. Well, I don't have to do you anything. Should. I don't want to um, do. Well, I'm, you're going to. So <laughs> yes, I love this. Disney is investing strategically in our most profitable segment experiences, parks and experiences. Remember, 70%. <sighs> yeah. This is where it gets good. We announced that $60 billion investment plan over 10 years that they keep going on about. And then they're like talking about investments are going to be based on this. Accelerating storytelling by utilizing our wealth of IP. Untapped stories, unmatched creativity. So we're going to shove IP into it. Untapped stories. What, what untapped stories? You mean new ones? That would be refreshing change. Unmatched creativity. What creativity? Because if you aren't doing live action reimaginings or sequels of everything, the stuff you shit out is terrible. Yeah. And even the stuff, the other stuff's terrible too. We're expanding our footprint. We have over a thousand acres of developable land across six existing resorts. They keep saying that, but they don't say what they're doing with it. Investing in innovative technology to improve the guest experience. Okay, what? Reaching new fans around the world for every park guest today. This is what they've been, they've been saying this. For every park guest today, we believe there are 10 consumers with Disney affinity who don't visit the parks in any given year. And then when they brought that before, they were talking about virtual experiences and stuff like that. So that sounds to me like more virtual shit. Yeah. Virtual dog shit coming to Fortnite. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, so can... they're talking about that. It's like they have the power washer game and they have the lawn mowing game. They can be like, you can pick up Pluto shit or Goofy's. Don't well, ask. I thought Goofy was like, I thought he was like a cow or a horse or something. Anyway, Goofy's a dog. I don't, is he? He's I don't a know. dog person. There's a difference. See, I know this. Somehow I know this. There's a difference between dog dogs and people dogs. Okay. My yes. dogs think they're people dogs. But that's a whole other story. Um, so here's their, their guides for innovative enabling our investment plans. Um, so here we're touting, oh, we have a frozen land in Hong Kong and coming to Tokyo, Disneyland, Disney Paris. We have Zootopia land, uh, at Shanghai, Shanghai Disney we have expansion of Tokyo Disney sea with three new areas for frozen Rapunzel and Peter Pan opening <laughs> June. We have Tion, but what do we get in the U S you're going to get a reskin because we're going princess and the frog on the splash mountain. Yeah. One of these things is not like the other. We're, we're, we've got entirely new themed lands overseas and then we just get a reskin over here. I mean, come on, come on. <laughs> and then they're going about their award winning innovation with galaxy's edge. Yeah. They had, they won a lot of, they keep winning awards and stuff. Uh, and that was back. They won a lot more awards back then than they are now. They won an award, if I remember correctly, they won an award for the Galactic Star Cruiser, and then they won another award for the quickest shutdown of yeah. a Disney attraction. Yeah, pretty much. Um, they're talking about their rationalizing costs and all this stuff. So anyway, they're going up to this and their capital return for shareholders, which again, I want to point out, they pulled out of their ass at last minute. Um, oh, we significantly improved our, you know, post-COVID. Well, it wouldn't be hard because your parks are more open post-COVID. Yeah. China kept shutting them down and Disneyland didn't open until way after Florida. 
Anyway, they go on and on about this crap. We're going to get down to here. Transformational. It's so weird. For, for somebody who isn't very creative, Nelson Peltz, right? Their presentation looked a lot better than it this did, one. It did. I love this. November 2022. So basically, listen, this is only when Iger came back. Now, yeah. the board, is the, okay, the board seats are what's up for, for debate here, right? Iger supposedly, you know, not supposed to be worried because he's going to be leaving anyway, right? But yeah, right. everything's going by when Iger returned. And he's throwing it all on Chapek. The even second though, coming. I know, right? That's what we've been saying since he, he was he brought yeah. back, the second coming of Iger. He threw Chapek under the bus, and a lot of the things that Chapek's getting blamed for were his own decisions. So let's look at this. In 2022, there was misaligned accountability. Well, I would argue that's still going on. Now, creativity and accountability is restored. Okay. Where? I'm looking at what's coming out that wasn't already in production in 2022, and I'm not seeing much creativity. Elevated spend and support prior media structure. Now they're annualized cost savings target of $7.5 billion. I want to point out, too, Chapek was already announcing a bunch of layoffs and cost cuts before Iger did, and then he got gone before he could implement them. So that wasn't – that was already in play. There's going to be operating losses and all that high volume of content focused on core franchise and higher quality. High volume of content? That was Iger. Yeah, because he was like, oh, we got to make a lot of stuff for Disney Plus. And then they just kind of kept kept on making stuff. And then they realized the stuff they promised cost way too damn much. Yeah. And where are all the where's the where's the back catalog? That's all people wanted. Continued post-COVID normalization like any other place. Well, now we're doing a $60 billion investment where they never said where they're getting the money from. Um, oh, ESP. This goes on and on. It's like a load of shit. So then they're talking about, oh, the board members. Oh, here. Here's their succession plan. Ready? Okay. The board is focused on both selecting a new CEO and positioning the new CEO for long-term success. Even though you don't hear anything about a new CEO until they're pushed by Peltz and, and yeah. Rizzullo. They extended Iger's contract. And whenever a succession comes up, it's crickets. Right? Mm -hmm. So now they're talking about, oh, well, our independent... Chairman Mark Parker, he helped, you know, succession planning before. But what, what's Mark done so far? Where are the candidates? Who are they? I mean, Bob Iger has been back for going on a year and a half. 2022. Yeah. yeah. By now, shouldn't there be candidates? You would think. And James Gro Gorman from Morgan Stanley, who just showed up on the board, just got added by Iger. OK, I also want to point out Morgan Stanley was the one who did the valuation for for Hulu for uh, Comcast. Still sounds like a conflict of interest to me. Yeah, he's there, too. And, 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 and he's he's had transition planning before, but literally just showed up in the last couple of months. But trust me, we've been planning this. Trust me, bro. And they're like they're going on about the you know, we met seven times discussing progress, D discussing its progress that doesn't get it done. We retained advisors. Where? We developed a timeline for a search product. Okay, cool. Where? Show it to us. Show it to us. Reviewing both internal and external candidates. Cool. Who? Where? Other than you saying so. Where? Please, please show us. Yeah, here we're going on about, you know, oh, Morgan Stanley and, and Nike. Oh, and here's our board and all the stuff they do. And they're so, oh, they all have different things. Here's their critical, diverse skill set. Look, they said that the board was smart men and women, yeah. but that some of, the pe some of them didn't seem to have as much experience and skills as others. Oh, well, it's interesting. Of the board members, only three of them have media and entertainment experience. Mm -hmm. uh, Derek, Everson, and Iger. And none of those are the ones that they want to replace. No, they were going to get rid of what uh, Lago okay, Lago here, this Lago one? and uh, Brand one? activation... Business and, and growth, which they would have that. Corporate responsibility, which they would have that. Executive management, they would have that. Finance and accounting, they would have it. Global business operations, I don't know about that one, but I would think. Risk management, probably. And diversity. Diversity! They have little dots for fucking diversity! So she got the diversity dot, guys. And then the other one they want to remove... Is Froman is with Froman. The cyber security. He doesn't get a diversity dot. And he has dot. the same things except for cyber security. Yeah. But they, they, they both... But like have they, like the fewest number of dots. Well, that's that's why they're on the chopping block because they're like all of their skill sets are overlapped with other board members. But again, for them going on about 
for them going on about uh, Pelts not having media experience, while well, Rizzullo does for sure. He's got it in spades, and only three of the members, you know, two others aside from Iger have any media and entertainment experience. Uh huh. So, and Iger, you know, honestly shouldn't be there anyway. So because he's he's like the CEO, but he's on the no. board too. <sighs> They're targeting two Disney directors with skill sets that are important. Where? Because basically the two you're saying Diversity have the same damn skill. Cyber security. They have the same skill sets as everybody yes. else. They all have this. They all have it. I can't believe you get a dot for diversity. That is so any woman gets Or if you're a, not white. Yeah. If you're not white or you're a woman, you so get the, a dot. The one not white person. Yep. Oh no no! There's an, I guess there's an Asian lady on here too. An Asian lady. There's yeah, and there's a black dude. Yeah. So you know you have to let them on here because you know they're important and he's my wife's friend's husband, and then um, they're going about why they're important because they did they did all these oh, things. She was the president and CEO of J P Morgan Private Bank. Isn't that the one that got in yeah. trouble? Uh yeah. So and she I, engages frequently with many of Disney's shareholders. Okay, well good for her. Um, but Jay Rizzullo, oh my God, this is ridiculous. Jay Rizzullo was there for 30 years. He was next in line to be CEO. Okay. He is infinitely more qualified. No media expertise. Well, there's well, a lot. Those are the people on the board. Yeah. Novel ideas demonstrate a lack of understanding in the media ecosystem. How? Previous board experience is known to establish shadow management teams. Okay. Con but how, wait, con to advancing <laughs> try and agenda. How's that different than Value Act Capital, who has a side deal with Bob Iger on the board and they get stuff first? How is that, how is different, that any different? How's that different than Bob Iger, who had his own people close to him that. Yeah, pretty much. Talking about maximum disruption. They keep using the terms disruptions, but I don't think they know what they don't really know what the word means. Um, Disney needs to be disrupted. Disney needs to be shaken up. I get Perlmutter doesn't like Iger. Well, Iger doesn't like Perlmutter. Perlmutter is always like Iger. Iger doesn't like Perlmutter. Lace is out. I don't know what to tell you. This is getting ridiculous. Bob Iger, not Jay Rizzo, was a driver of the company's strategy and value creation. He didn't say that he was. No. He just said that, you know, they would get together and he was in charge of the parks and they had to come up with their money. But I also know that the company had a lot more value when he was there. Uh, yeah, it did. I mean, look, this guy worked with Eisner and he's been with the company for 30 years. He he seems to get it. Like when you listen to him talk, he talks like the old school Disney people that we used to deal with. The people that have been with the company for a while. Like you can tell he legitimately cares about the company. And he's like, people are asking him like, what the hell's going on at Disney? He's like, I have no idea. I have no idea. His leadership of parks and being CFO does not automatically translate to leading the creative soul of Disney. Well, but You're what's not her face? Either. What's her yeah. face in that other guy? She has no, no media cyber experience. security in the yeah. banker. Yeah, there, that's that, definitely about creativity. I mean, come on. How's that come about creativity? The people they're replacing aren't creative people either. They want to replace. No further executive experience any public company since leaving his role at Disney eight years ago. So, yeah, his perspectives are stale. What well, you keep saying that, but what does that mean? Elaborate. How are they still? He basically said, you got too much shit like Genie Plus and that mucking up the parks and yeah. not making the flywheel go. And you're not creative enough. What the heck? Your movies are sucking. What's, what's stale? Please explain because you keep saying that, but you don't fucking explain what that means. Oh, no. The iHeartMedia stock uh, fell. Not, not unlike Disney's that also fell but the to record lows. But media, they weren't doing great anyway. No, they weren't that, doing great. Again, Iger joined uh, over at Funko. Funko, like yeah. he was He was an advisor and put, dumped all his own personal money into it. And then the stock tanked as, after, as he's advising them. And he probably lost a shit ton of money. But yes, do go on. Plus, look at the Disney company and all the money they've lost for shareholders. But yeah, yeah, you're just doing a good job there, bucko. Keep it on up. Um, the management conversation is heavily tied to Disney performance. <sighs> I like this one. This is, this is, the board has skin in the game. We said so. The median value of shares held by independents. Uh, Trying claims ownership of 3 billion Disney stock. In reality, he owns only 650 million, whatever shares. But what, 1.6 owns... is, is the median value. Yeah. But he has controlling interest over Perlmutter's shares, which that's going to be a problem. But I, still, I he has more ownership. He has more shares yes. than, than, than people on the board. Yes. Like, yeah. So I'm like, like I'm not understanding this. Much. I'm like, not understanding this. 
I don't, yeah. you please explain. Nelson, Pelts, Ike Perlmutter, and Jay Rizzullo are not what Disney needs right now. Well, they need Walt, but we can't really dig yeah, him I up. I wonder that's going to happen. Um, Can they AI Walt? Can they, like, program everything Walt has ever done into AI? Oh, no, they AI? make a very current year. But Because there was yes. actually this, this 1K drama, and it was um, Unlock My Boss. And at the end, you find out, you think that the boss is in the phone and the computer system the whole time. But no, no, he's in a coma. It was an AI version of him was what uh, happened. So I'm like, is that what this is? Like, uh you know, we we could be just like AI Jarvis. Walt. You know? Yeah. Just... Well, what do we do? Um, oh my God, I, I was I was hoping you were talking about something other than chicken nugget because I'm like, yeah, Walt Disney was turned into a chicken nugget. <laughs> okay. We cut For his head off. Because I never talked about. It, I don't think in a video did. And I? he turned into a chicken nugget. There's a K drama coming out called Chicken Nugget where this guy's daughter gets turned into a chicken nugget, and I am all about it. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Okay, Pelts does not understand the challenges Disney's facing. Well, neither does the current board and Bob Iger, clearly. Pelts, um, these are nothing new and underscores lack of understanding of both Disney and the media industry. Well, half your board, most of your board doesn't have a media industry background. Let's talk about a silent partner, partner Perlmutter. That's hard to say. But hard Disney and jeopardize our strategic transformation. Why are you so hot up on Perlmutter? Like, if you didn't fucking do something in the first place to make him mad... Why are you so hung up on that? Like, Bob Iger is deathly afraid of Ike Perlmutter. Yeah. It's, next, like, it's like Voldemort to him. Next time, aim for the head. Yeah. Then they're talking about, um, they're talking about, just, they just don't show, no, understand shareholders' long-term interests. Well, shareholders want to make money. And so far, their interest hasn't made money. So I think their long-term interest is making money and watching Disney be Disney again. Yeah. I think a lot of people are tired of Disney being whatever this is. Oh, they go, he don't have, they don't have skills to help Disney. It sounds like they did. Um, he has, Disney has sought constructive engagement with Pelts, but he's unwilling to consider any resolution beside a board seat for himself. Well, why is the board so set that they have to all remain? Why is it, why is that a problem? Like, we're, we're going to, we'll work with you, but we all get to sit on the board and you don't. Well, why do none of these people have to be removed? But it's bad that he's asking for a seat, but they have, but it's not bad that they won't re relinquish theirs. Yeah. That's even though word. they've run the company into the ground. I, I, why is one okay and the other is not? Because he can control, he can control the current board. He can't control Pelts. He can't control Rizzullo and he definitely can't control Perlmutter. And that's what this is about. And they're going on about, oh, the challenge. Again, Peltz doesn't understand the challenges because of media. Um, which he readily admits. He's honest about it. Yeah. That's a refreshing change for what we're getting from Disney. Yeah. But again, they keep going after Peltz. Rizzullo okay, does Okay, now have... they're going to go after Rizzullo. Okay. Um, you know, the partner with Jerry is equally oblivious. He doesn't understand why Disney acquired 20th cent first century Fox. That most of us don't understand. No, it Why added. Disney spent seventy-two billion? I'm sorry, Iger spent seventy-two billion dollars to acquire 20th Century Fox. Other than Iger wanting to say that he did something big and it was his legacy, and he overspent because he didn't want Comcast to have it. You, I mean, you would have to generate dozens of a billion dollar movies from those assets and to to make that money back, and they're not going to do that. And they keep saying, oh, he's stuck with legacy analog thinking. Wait, whoa, whoa, legacy analog thinking. You're an old stinky man. No, no, you're old and you think like Walt, and that's a problem. Because that, what is That's what this been? is about, yeah. yeah. He's, he is very much, you could tell, again, there's a certain um, demeanor. If you, if you know, we, we've been around enough Disney people, you know, having been on the media list and stuff like that. So, but when you're around people that have been with the company for a long time, their manner of speaking, they're very kind of casual and they understand kind of Walt's thought process. And I saw that not in Nelson Pels, but I saw it in Jay Rizzullo for sure. Like you could tell this guy came up through the system and he still was old school Disney. And I think the board needs more old school Disney to course correct, to get back to being Disney. And they're going like, well, well Iger said that it was about streaming as well. They bought Fox. It was about Iger overspending to be like, look, we got this stuff. And then what have they gotten out of it? Because you know what? The, the people from Fox used the money to go buy Tubi. And they're further yeah. ahead. Because beyond this Fox acquisition, then you had to spend how much money on building a streaming service? Mm -hmm. You know? So bullshit. Um, Pelt, these are nothing new and underscores lack of understanding of Disney and media. 
Again, only three people on the board have media experience, including Iger. Um, he wants to initiate board-led reviews of creative process. I agree. Uh, well, they don't know, understand creative process. He said he wants to look at the processes to make sure they go back to making original and creative things. And basically, it sounds to me like a lot of it is to make sure you purge the toxicity out of the company. Yeah. You know, oh, Target met look like margins. He doesn't understand streaming. It doesn't have a plan. But you keep, okay, for this arbitrary time, arbitrary timeline, did, you looked at your paper, right? Because you basically put the Netflix is at 21% and that your future goal is to be to double digits, but you don't know when. You don't know when. It, that sounds like an um, arbitrary timeline to me. When the future, that's an arbitrary timeline that doesn't have a plan. You said that you're going to hit those, but how? You didn't specify. No. So where's your plan? That's not remotely arbitrary. Their, with- their plan is to survive another year. That is their plan. Like these, they don't have a plan. There is no plan. Yeah, here, here. Committed to break even by the end of this fiscal year with a long term double digit margin target. Okay. But when and how? You didn't explain that. Like, please explain. You know, they just aren't. They're just like, it's okay. <sighs> he, he's just throwing shit against the wall, but it's okay if we do it. Yeah, pretty much. You know, we had a clear vision we laid out in September. Well, I was still trying to figure out what that is because I'm not seeing a clear vision. They're just, we have the best in class, in class, in class governance. Doesn't sound like it to me. No. Nope. Succession is the board top priority. Succession is the board top priority. Bob Iger has been back for uh, since November of 2022. Yeah. He wasn't supposed to be back for more than a couple of years. You gave him an extension until, what, 2026? Mm-hmm. A two-year extension. And nothing has been done about succession at all. Nothing has been announced. There has been zero movement, at least shown to the shareholders, on succession. Nothing. And you keep going there. We're working on it because we're having meetings. We have candidates. Who? Who are the candidates? Yeah. Who you know? Who? 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 I, I, I Bullshit. We have ongoing board refreshment, including five independent directors in the past three years that Iger picked. I, well, Chaving might have picked one of the two of them, but these are all Iger. He just put a bunch of, when he knew that they were wanting to board seats, he went and got more people and threw them on there, including the one guy from Morgan Stanley. Okay. Mm. Mm-hmm. God, I'm not going to go through any more of this because it's just so. It's, I'm sorry that Trian's. Trans paper was actually more creative. They actually showed the franchises and now they've declined and that they talked more. Actually, the Tryon paper talked more about getting back about to solutions? the heart. Yeah. Getting back to the heart of Disney being a creative company and then everything radiates from that. I'm not seeing Disney talk a lot about being creative in this. Wait, wait, wait. I got I got I gotta go here. They're talking about Perlmutter, because they really it's like he's like the he is like the Voldemort. They're talking about how he his oversight of Marvel Studios was severed in 2015 during its ongoing antagonization of the creative team, right? Because that hot damn creative team is what brought us Phase Four, yeah. and and what we've got because they, they they brought us all that love that lovely shit that no one wants. Okay, he didn't want to do Black Panther. Okay, I'll give him the Black Panther was actually good, so I, I I can see them on that. But Captain Marvel, he was right about Captain Marvel. Ultimately, made all this money. Captain Marvel only made money because, one, I think you cheated. But beyond that, two, people thought they had to go see it to see Endgame. Yes. That's why they went to Captain Marvel. When Captain Marvel had to stay on, stand on her own two feet, it bombed, and you're in the whole $100 million. So I call bullshit on that one, Disney. That's numbers don't lie, okay? And then Perlmutter left. I love this. He left in March. Like, like he left. As part of the company's cost reduction program, that means you fired him. That doesn't mean he left. He left as part of the cost reduction program. Left. Yeah. That, I, that means you, 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 you fired him. Everybody, everybody leaves Disney, right? They don't actually get fired. Nobody actually gets fired. So Jay Rizzullo didn't, didn't uh, you know, he didn't get fired either. Oh so why? why? <laughs> they still can't let it go. They're talking about pouts here. Pelts with Perlmutter in July of 2022, and the two began working together to get Pelts a Disney board seat. Oh, that Perlmutter. Do oh. <laughs> it. Rizzullo resigned after not being appointed Disney CEO. You know what? 
uh, your advisors, yeah. your advisor Stags and Mayor, both quit when they didn't get promoted either. But their advisors, because they 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 do what Bob wants, their advisors, and and they also did not get promoted. When they were supposed to. This is what it's about. Yeah, Rizzullo is Perlmutter's guy. He they the, will not stop with Perlmutter. He, he this was is the, all about Perlmutter. He was the guy that Perlmutter wanted to take over Disney, and Perlmutter and Bob Iger have been on the outs ever since. I, I'm sorry, Jay Rizzullo, listening to him talk, he gets classic Disney more because Iger is all about Iger and his legacy. This guy seems to understand where, where the company came from. This just smacks. Everything about this is Iger. Iger's yeah. arrogance. Iger's legacy. Yep. Iger not liking Perlmutter. All I'm hearing is, I don't want to work with him because he's stinky and I don't like him. That, basically, that's what it is. I don't like Rizzullo because Perlmutter liked him. I mean, <laughs> when Iger told like, Perlmutter oh that Rizzullo wouldn't be COO in 2015, Perlmutter responded, you broke my heart. Oh, my God. Was this like the godfather? Again, I want to point out again that his advisors he has at Disney right now both quit because they weren't made yeah. CEO or C, they, they, but they didn't get the jobs they wanted either. Mayor quit after um, Chapek got moved up. So your own people that you're kissing ass to and you brought in to advise you are, are it's okay when they didn't get, they, they quit because they didn't get the, the promotion. You're not bringing that out. And neither are these guys. They're not bringing that out and parading out people's flaws like that. But Disney is. God, Disney, I thought you were so much better than this. <laughs> well, you, well, no, you used to be. Used to be. You used to be better than this. God, we're, I love this. We're always open to constructive shareholder engagement, as Value Act can attest. Bullshit. Fucking bullshit. You are not. You are open to constructive when it's what you want to hear. When you're kissing your, when you're kissing Iger's ass and telling what you want, value act can't test value act. The the ones who you have a side deal with, that's so bad that um, the the other group they they, they they're Blackwells. They're one of the things that they were their sticking points, which they never get mentioned this at all. It's yeah. just Brazil. Their sticking point was one of them was a value act capital has an unfair advantage for their customers because they have a a deal with the Disney board. You know, whatever. Yeah, it's yeah. And, and then it's, it's all value yeah. act to stuff. But value act to voting a stake in Disney. Value act did this. Value act did that. I can't. I can't. It's just, this is, again, this is compared to. God, how long did I go on for? It's hard to believe this is actually a Disney white paper because it does not. There's no creative. The only creativity in this paper is some of the shit they're making no, uh, up. They are. They are the, the kings and queens of creativity and the other kins of creativity. The other kins. They are. Their board only has three people that have media experience, but they are the creatives of the world. And it doesn't matter that they're getting their ass kicked by every other creative company in existence. They are creativity. You look up creativity and Disney and Bob Iger and the current board are listed. Bob Iger, you, yeah. Like every morning, Bob Iger's face rises over Disneyland like the baby from, from Teletubbies. Know, right? You cannot restore the magic. We don't understand the magic. Yeah, exactly. And that's why the company is fucked up. <laughs> I hundred percent agree with that. That that should be a white that should be a white paper. This is why Disney is fucked up. <laughs> yeah, written less by. than one hundred and thirty pages. Your shit sucks. Your attitude sucks. You're too political. You cost too much. Your movies suck. Your movies suck. It mm -hmm. goes with the shit. But your yeah. theme parks are lacking, and you're not fixing. They're they're falling apart. You're not fixing what you have. You're charging and more, and you're not even doing basic maintenance on stuff. Right, like, oh, but you fuck? get you get an overlay. Because we're gonna, because we want Tiana, and, and we're gonna do that one because you know because of racism. Oh, don't worry, uh, Tiana's gonna get an overlay when she breaks down, and they'll just put another screen up. Well, actually, they have a lot of. I don't know for the whole ride, but at least part of it, they have quite a bit of animatronics. But I think after a certain point, you're gonna see more screens. Mm -hmm. But the board is delivering on Disney's potential. You just haven't seen it yet. Over the last few years of the board, people have been there, but we swear we're delivering on potential. That we only made changes when we had to, and we only announcing this stupid shit that we literally pulled out of our ass when we had to. Disney is only reacting. That's the thing. Disney is a reactionary company. They're now they're not they're not a visionary company. They're a reactionary company, and they're only reacting now because they have to. They don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. They got God. This goes on about oh oh they, they're mentioned oh in an appendix the Blackwells get a whole like 30, 40, 54 pages of. 
pelts and Rizzullo and then an appendix. Yeah, well, the Blackwells, their their plan is so ridiculous. I don't think anybody is taking them seriously. They're just like, oh, yeah, and also the Blackwells. But clearly, the issue for them is Perlmutter and his shares, because I think Perlmutter's shares could put uh, Rizzullo and pelts on the board. I. This is whole thing is it sounds like it's a, sla- a pissing slap fight between Iger and Perlmutter. <laughs> a pissy slap. That's what it sounds like. Girls, you're both pretty. No, they're not. Don't tell them that. You're you're both you're both awesome. Just stop slapping each other. That's what this is. And they're talking about this is about their the the Blackwells, which they don't even spend any time on because well, they're they're not so a threat. Ridiculous. They're not a threat. No, that's just it. Blackwell plan. They're not a threat. It clearly is about Perlmutter's shares and i think that it's pretty damn close or they think they're going to lose um which is why they're freaking the hell out because they would not be putting out video after video and paper after paper if they thought they had this they don't have it i just i can't know they don't have it i know that's just it they're they're definitely freaking out i mean the white paper wasn't very creative but you know they put it out but the video earlier is where where i'm like and then pulling out the grandkids those two things are why i'm like yeah you guys are in panic mode yep Definitely panic mode because you put a very un Disney video. Yes. A very, like I said, it was more like a political mudslinging yep. ad than it was a Disney video. And you put that out. And then, you know, before you even got this up, like you have to get something up quick. And it's, mm, that isn't the, that isn't the Disney that people have known and loved for, for decades. Well, that was just everything uh, you say you hate. They tried that. They tried it with the uh, Ludwig von Drake. And, they it, got mocked a little yeah, place yeah, for that they one. got roasted. So now they're like, well, fine. Oh, you mean our Disney magic razzle dazzle isn't going to fix it? Oh, okay, let's go for the jugular. This mouse has teeth, bitches. That's right. Anyway, this has been going on for like 50 some minutes. Oh so we God. probably should wrap it up. It was very long, but it still wasn't as long as the white paper from uh, Tryon. So. Yeah, well, they're, objectively, their white paper was much better. I'm just saying. It, it made a, a much better case. It had more graphs and stuff, too. Yeah, it did have more pictures. But, they're, but Disney's the creative one that likes to make things with pictures. Oh, God. They well, threw we, this together in like an afternoon. Uh, well, I think it was more than an afternoon, but Two it was afternoons. definitely thrown together. So anyway, and it, it, a lot of it was just repeating the same. Some of those pages were just repeats of other yep. pages, just slightly worded differently. Like, oh, look, we're saying more, but we're not really. College program intern. Hey, get over here. AI, hurry up. AI. Slap this together. We're creative. Creative bot, get over here. Hey. <laughs> Walt 2000, get over here. I think, I'm, you think I'm kidding about that, but they technically could probably make an AI of Walt. Anyway. Yeah. How are we going to wrap this up? We're definitely going to wrap this up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants. I swear to God, their videos normally aren't this long. No. Uh, we'll talk to you later. Bye.